HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hello and welcome to HCAM News. Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to fill you in with what's happening in town. On this edition of HCAM News, we have highlights from the state finals for Hiller Girls Soccer. American Legion Post 202 hosted the annual Veterans Day ceremony. And with Thanksgiving coming up, we look back at some classic Hiller's Clockers football games. But first, several Hiller athletes signed letters of intent to play in college. I'm signing to commit to Stonehill for women's golf for next year and the next four years. And you've had an uh, excellent season. The Hillers took home the Division II state championship. Can you talk about uh, what it's been like playing this season and what it's been like playing for Coach Bliss? It's been awesome. The four years for Coach Bliss have been great. He's taught me so much about the sport and just how to love it and how to improve. And the team's been awesome. All the boys have been so inclusive all four years, and it's just been great. Great. All right, what was it like to take home state championship? That was awesome. The bus ride home was probably the best part. Everyone was so happy to um, especially get it twice in a row and being part of the team and captaining was just great. Hi, so I signed the National Letter of Intent to uh, die for the University of Rhode Island in the fall of 2019. Um, really excited. Excellent. And uh, how have you liked your career here at Hopkinton? I've loved it. It's really shaped me um, into who I am today. Um, I've had an amazing diving career and made a lot of friends along the way. Terrific. And what are you going to be studying over at URI? I'm, I'm going to be studying elementary education because I want to be a teacher. So I just signed my national letter of intent for uh, to play soccer at UMass Lowell for my next four years. Excellent. You guys are heading to a state championship. Yes, on Saturday. What's it been like to play with this team and to play for Coach Snyder? Uh It's been amazing. He's been incredibly supportive of all of us. Um, the team is so amazing. I love every one of them. It's been a great ride. I'm sad for it to end on Saturday. All right, what are you going to be studying at college? Uh, I'm going to be going into physical therapy. I am signing my NLI along the way to journey. I'm excited for the next thing, but I'm excited for high school just to go on and like just everything from there, but I'm trying to live in the now. What's it been like playing for the Hillers? It's been really fun. It's kind of hard with the transition of coaches, but as a team we've kind of worked together to not ignore it, but like embrace the differences of the coaching staff. But I'm really excited for this year. Our team is stacked, and we're going to pound other teams to the ground. <laughs> yeah, we hope so. Um, what are you going to be studying over at UMass? I'm not sure yet. I'm going in undecided, but I'm thinking of doing marketing and um, maybe minoring in psychology, too. But nothing math and science. Um, I'm signing my NLI. All right, and uh, you're going to be playing softball at Manhattan. Uh, what made you choose uh, Manhattan? Um, when I walked on the campus, I instantly loved it. It made me feel so um, at home, so I'm super excited. Terrific. What are you going to be studying over there? Um, biology with a concentration in pre-dental. And uh, what's it been like to play for the Hillers? Um, it's been so great. Like All my teammates have been fantastic, and I love it. So I just signed my Division I National Letter of Intent for Merrimack College and I'm going to play lacrosse there. I'm super excited. Terrific. And uh, you're about to go to a state championship for girls soccer. Can you talk about what it's been like to play uh, for the Hillers in lacrosse and in soccer? It's been an awesome experience. Um, both teams bring a totally different atmosphere, but both wonderful. And I'm super stoked for the game on Saturday. Terrific. Um, I'll be playing lacrosse at Stonehill College. Terrific, and uh, what's it been like to play uh, lacrosse as well as many other sports for the Hillers? 
Um, it's been so awesome. I think the experience is really amazing, and I'm really excited to continue playing lacrosse. Terrific. What are you going to be studying over at Stonehill? Um, I'm going in undecided, but maybe with the business focus or something like that. So. All right. Well, congratulations. <laughs> Thank and you. Wish you the best of luck. This past Sunday at Marshfield High School, it was state championship girls soccer. The South champion Hopkinton Hillers took on the North champion Winchester to determine who would take home the Division II state title. Here is a look at the Hiller girls playoff run starting with the sectional championship versus Notre Dame Academy of Hingham. Throw in for the Hillers, scoreless between the ninth seeded Hillers and the sixth seeded Notre Dame of Hingham Cougars. Tom Nappy, Mike Terosian on the call. Has broke on the entry. Mike also running camera on this beautiful afternoon. Here comes the Hillers, an opportunity here. Shot to the left, and that's in! Goal, Hopkinton, Allie Bird! It comes with 14.54 left to go in the first half. And the Hillers, they have the lead. Allie Bird strikes again. She had the only goal in the win against Medway, and she gets one here. On Monday, November 12th, another great defensive effort by the Hillers girls soccer team led to a sectional finals victory over Notre Dame of Hingham by a final of one to nothing. The Hillers are four and zero in the postseason and have outscored their opponents five to nothing in the playoffs. That's right, the Hillers have not allowed a goal all throughout the postseason. Out of 22 games the Hillers have played this season, they shut out their opponents in 17 of them and have allowed only seven goals all season long. The last goal the Hillers let up was all the way back on October 15th. Truly amazing defense. Head coach Wayne Sigrove is in his first season at the helm for the Hillers and is excited about advancing to the state finals. So first off, a big day for a couple of uh, your players today. Uh, you had uh, Natalie Calkins, Gabby uh, Welding signing uh, the letters of intent. Uh, can you talk about what it's been like to coach those two? Yeah, it's been fantastic. Uh, two senior, two captains. Uh, Natalie's out, been our goalkeeper, outstanding. She was just voted our unsung hero of the year. Um, only conceded seven goals all season, zero goals in the tournament. She's been a rock back there for us. Really happy that she's uh, carrying on her athletic career um, at Merrimack College, great school. Um, although she's not playing soccer, she's going to be playing lacrosse. Um, she's got a bright future ahead of her. Um, and same for Gabby, she's been outstanding. Voted a TVL All-Star, great leader, scored some vital goals for the girls. Um, and she's moving on to, to UMass Lowell to carry on her soccer career. So they have a bright future ahead of them. Coach, and this is your first year coaching uh, girls soccer, but the team just seems to be, get better every single game. And they've pitched shutouts throughout the uh, postseason. What's it been like to coach this group? It's been fantastic. It's been a great ride. We uh, obviously new season. Uh, so a few bumps in the road early on, getting to know the girls, uh, new system, um, new environment, new culture, new mentality, but the girls have really bought into the process. They've got better each and every game as the season's gone along. Uh, they've grown in confidence, they believe in each other, um, and to win their first tournament final, uh, my first season is fantastic and hopefully we can uh, finish off and win the state finals this Saturday. And how excited is the team to be heading to the state finals? Oh, they're pumped. They're, we had our banquet um, at the, uh, on Monday after the uh, tournament final, um, and they're so excited. It's been, a, it's been an awesome season, and uh, they just can't wait to get going on Saturday. All right, Coach. Well, congratulations. We wish you the best of luck Saturday. Thank you. Appreciate it. Due to a snowstorm that hit before the scheduled Saturday state championship game, Hopkinton and Winchester met up in the Division II state championship on Sunday, November 18th at Marshfield High School. It was a great defensive battle throughout. Riley Delaney defending in front of the net, and the ball ends up grazing her arm, and in soccer, that is a penalty. In the 59th minute of the game, senior midfielder Grace Casey nets a goal on a penalty kick for Winchester and that would be all they needed. The game would end by a final of one to nothing. The Hiller girls fall in the state championship 
and end a tremendous season with a record of 13 wins, 4 losses, and 6 ties. Congratulations to head coach Wayne Sygrove and the Lady Hillers on a tremendous season and achieving the deepest playoff run for girls soccer in Hopkinton High School history. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Welcome back to HCAM News. The Hopkinton Hillers and Ashland Clockers will once again take the field this year for their 95th meeting on Thanksgiving. Hopkinton and Ashland are one of the oldest Thanksgiving rivalries in the state and have produced some classic moments. Here is a look at some of the most recent meetings between the Hopkinton Hillers and the Ashland Clockers. For the 94th time, the Hopkinton Hillers met up with the Ashland Clockers for Thanksgiving Day football. A new tradition started this year as members of the Ashland and Hopkinton cross country team ran all the way from Ashland High School to David M. Hughes Stadium to deliver the game ball. The first points of the game came in the second quarter. A pitch to Will Abbott, and he finds the end zone from a few yards out. The extra point makes it 7 to nothing Hillers. Two minutes, 40 seconds left in the first half. A high snap on the Ashland punt, and Connor Hebert makes the tackle for the safety, and the Hillers take the nine to nothing lead into the halftime locker room. Third quarter, 6.57 left. The Hillers turn it over at the three, and Ashland takes advantage of the situation. Little lofting pass, oh, oh, number 13. Down the sideline, he's going, he's going to make it all the way. Abbott's got a, an angle, he's at the 10, and he's not able to get him. That's all the way down for a 97-yard touchdown by number 13, Nathan Sickles. 97 yards on the touchdown rece reception. Later in the quarter, Ashland punting, and uh-oh, another high snap leads to another safety. And the Hillers go up by four. And that is how the score would stay. The Hillers end their historic 2017 season with a record of 11 and one and take the victory by a final of 11 to seven. The five and five Hopkinton Hillers met up with the five and five Ashland Clockers for the 92nd Thanksgiving rivalry game. First quarter, Colin Hanrahan gets things started for Ashland as he takes the handoff from about the 25 yard line and plummets ahead for the score. Extra point was good, making it 7-0 Ashland. Hillers threaten to even out the score as Sam Lehman rushes from the 15 and gets inside the five. Hillers were pushed back due to penalties. So what does Sam Lehman do? He sets the Hillers up around the one yard line and then... And he hands off to Lehman. Lehman squirts forward and he is... Touchdown. In for a touchdown. On the conversion attempt, Jake Keller takes the quick snap and runs through open field right into the end zone to make it eight to seven Hillers. Second quarter, Colin Hanrahan responds, slipping through tackles and forces himself ahead for 13 yards and to make it 13 points for Ashland. Extra point was good, making it 14 to eight Ashland. Jake Keller responds, firing a 53 yard bomb to Jack Vacari to tie up the game. Hillers kick the extra point and lead 15 to 14. Ashland wasn't going away though. Later in the second quarter, Mitch Porter connects with Max Feinberg to move Ashland up to the 27 yard line. Then a few plays later, Porter with the fake and boom, finds Seamus Reardon in the end zone. Extra point good, clockers up 21 to 15. Ashland would get the ball back once again in the second quarter and Mitch Porter finds Joe Schelling for a 25-yard reception. And then Colin Hanrahan finds the end zone for his third time of the day and makes it 28 to 15 clockers after the extra point. Jake Keller responds as he finds Jack Vacari for the second time in the end zone for the 25-yard touchdown pass. He'll throw Keller pump fakes, now he throws. He's got a man open, it's Vacari, and he has him for touchdown! 
Jack Fakari from 22 yards out, and the Hillers answer. The extra point puts the Hillers within six. It was 28-22 clockers at the half. Third quarter was mostly a defensive battle. Jay Keller, though, continued his role and launches a 37-yard touchdown pass right into the arms of Will Abbott. The Hillers got the extra point and take a 29-28 lead. There's a throw to the middle of the field and wide open is Abbott for the touchdown! Later in the third quarter, Joe Kirkak returned the lead to the Clockers as he buried a 27-yard field goal to make it a 31-29 game. About three minutes left to go in the game. The Hillers positioned at the Clockers 23. Jake Keller fires down the left side of the field and right over a defender to Will Abbott who takes it all the way into the end zone and puts the Hillers up 35 to 31. For the middle and he has it. Oh! Abbott! Oh, Abbott gets it! Gets it. He's at the 20, the 10, and he is in for a touchdown! And the Hillers take the lead! Hillers later in the fourth took an intentional safety to set up the kickoff. The Ashland Clockers now on their last play. A swing pass followed by a lateral and then out of bounds in the Hopkinton Hillers take a wild Thanksgiving showdown, 35-33. Hopkinton and Ashland met on Thanksgiving morning for the 91st time in the home of the Clockers. Snow fell through the previous night into the morning, making the field a sloppy, wet mess, which meant for a very defensive game. First drive of the game, Pat Ryan eludes a couple of defenders and completes to Hayden Pereira, who was forced out of bounds at around the Ashland 45-yard line. Then a few plays later, Jake Keller at quarterback. Pat Ryan spread to the left. Pat Ryan catches the football. The Ashland defense stepped it up, however. Drew Donahue stuffed here for a loss. Then Jake Keller sacked. The Clockers defense get the job done and keep the game scoreless. On Ashland's possession, quarterback Mitch Porter finds Philip Cooper under pressure. And Cooper turns on the Jets and breaks into Hiller's territory. Colin Hanrahan then sets up Ashland nicely within the Hillers 20 yard line heading to the second quarter. Ashland keeps the charge going with this great catch by Max Feinberg. He says he was in bounds and so does the official of first and goal for Ashland. Then a Hopkinton pass interference call sets up this Mitch Porter touchdown to make it a six to nothing game. A Joe Kirkak extra point put the clockers up seven with 8.16 left in the first half. After the Ashland touchdown, both defenses went back and forth forcing punts, but then in the fourth quarter, Pat Ryan goes to Matt Decina here for the first down. And then later in the drive, Pat Ryan connects with Matt Decina for the touchdown. Hillers, an extra point away from tying the game. Problem was, they were still an extra point away from tying. The Hillers said, you know what? It's Thanksgiving. Let's go for the conversion. Ryan takes a snap and throws it incomplete. 6.56 left to go in the game. Ashland up on Hopkinton, 7-6. The Hillers then go for the onside kick, but Ashland scoops it up and has the football with great field position. Ashland moved the chains a couple times, but the Hillers defense bent but did not break. They forced the turnover on downs. Hillers get the ball at their own 30 with 2.24 left to go in the game. Keller to Pat Ryan. Oh, off of Ryan's hands and the clockers have the interception. Ashland has a chance to end it here with just a first down. All they need is about a yard. But oh no, Colin Hanrahan jumps and pushes the Clockers back five. Clockers here for the knockout punch, and it's incomplete. Hillers get the ball back. Drew Donahue takes a little pass here, and some good footwork leads to the Hillers' first down. Keller then has a big completion of Pat Ryan. Hillers get quickly back to the line. Keller this time finds Pereira inside the 10 yard line and the Hillers are in business. A flag pushed the Hillers back so now it was about a 31 yard field goal try for Adam Giordano. This is for the lead. Snap, 
spot, kick, and it's going to be... And it's good! 9-7 to seven, Hopkinton with not a lot of time left. Hiller's kickoff, and Ashland is hoping for a miracle. Lateral followed by lateral, but Hopkinton special teams come through and secure the 9-7 victory. The Hillers finish the season 5-6, and six, Ashland 6-5. Six and five. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Standing by to tell you all about it is Matt Clark with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and here's what's happening this week on HCAM. On Friday, November 23rd at 5 p.m., Creativity Fluid artist Deanna Traveris performs her unique style of poetry that combines her many artistic talents on a new episode of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. On Monday, November 26th at 7 p.m., the HHS Drama Ensemble performs their fall musical production of Godspell on a brand new HCAM Ed special. On Tuesday, November 27th at 7 p.m., the Board of Selectmen meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Wednesday, November 28th at 7 p.m., attorney Arthur Bergeron talks with seniors about the importance of irrevocable trusts on a new HCAM TV special. If you want to know more about all of HCAM's shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv slash connect, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website for the latest happenings in our community and check out the new Hopkinton Community Calendar to take a look at upcoming events in town. If you have a Hopkinton-related video photo or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care, and from all of us at HCAM, we wish you, your family, and friends a very happy Thanksgiving. diligence to seek thee, and wisdom to find thee. Sanctify us with thy presence, bless us with thy might, and assist us with thy counsel, that all our endeavors may begin with thee, and through thee may be happily ended. Amen. 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 Here at the Hell to never forget that while we enjoy our daily pleasures, there are others who have endured and may still be enduring agonies of pain, deprivation, and imprisonment. Before we begin our activities, we pause to recognize our POWs and MIAs. We call your attention to this small table, which occupies a place of dignity and honor. It is set for one, symbolizing the fact that our members of our armed forces are missing from our ranks. They are referred to as POWs and MIAs. We call them comrades. They are unable to be with their loved ones and, and families, so we join together to pay a humble tribute to them and to bear witness to their continued absence. The table is small, symbolizing the frailty of one prisoner alone against his or her suppressors. The tablecloth is white, symbolic of the purity of their intentions to respond to their country's call to arms. The single rose in the base <coughs> signifies the blood they may have shed in sacrifice to ensure the freedom of our beloved United States of America. This rose also reminds us of the family and friends of our missing comrades who keep faith while awaiting their return. The red ribbon on the base represents an unyielding determination for a proper accounting of our comrades who are not among us. A slice of lemon on the plate reminds us of their bitter fate. The salt sprinkled on the plate reminds us of the countless volunteers of families as they wait. The glass is inverted. They cannot toast with us at this time. 
The chair is empty. They are not here. The candle is reminiscent of the light of hope, which lives in our hearts to illuminate their way home, away from their captors, to the open arms of a grateful nation. The American flag reminds us that many of them may never return and have paid the supreme sacrifice to ensure our freedom. It is believed that later, that evening, after the burial, Colonel McRae began the draft for his now famous poem, In Flanders Fields. It reads, In Flanders fields the poppies blow, between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place and in the sky, the larks so bravely singing fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved. And now we lie in Flanders Field. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you, from failing hands, we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with those who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders Field. Let no one feel forgotten or neglected. Let every man and woman, young or seasoned, feel the deep and enduring gratitude of our nation and its people. You know that veterans can feel isolated and alone, even in the midst of their friends and families, because there are few around who understand their experience. Remind them often that while their, federal, while their fellow human beings may never fully comprehend, you see, you know, and you identify with them in everything. Lord, you know how deep a warrior's wounds go. You know the memories that haunt them and the scars that many of them continue to carry. Please bring healing to those veterans who still hurt. Reward them for their sacrifice, their service, and all that they have given. Bless them far beyond all their expectations and bless our time here today. In your holy name, amen. amen. I'd like to acknowledge a veteran here today um, for the proclamation from the uh, Department of Massachusetts uh, American Legion. The American Legion Auxiliary Department of Massachusetts, Massachusetts recognizes the female veteran is an integral part of the veterans community. And the national and department presidents have both adopted honoring uh, female veterans as their special project this year. Here in Hopkinton, we're going to take this opportunity to thank Betty Brannigan. You come up here, Betty. 